so for today we can uh there's so many things we can talk and for me uh, the questions i i have for you today is mm-hmm. i know we have like one hour <laughs> um for you it is what the chat as what the if you look if you go in the past what the challenges did you did you overcome to be to be where you are today um as a what uh, uh, i mean of course different forms of challenges so which one yes. are you talking about specifically I, I mean like you know as you like being in school having like a, a regular life in terms of jobs and um and of and um maybe like you know did you maybe like like most people like do you know you know like military and like you know oh. uh, and how did you become like a, and he says like okay i want to pastor you know oh, for the, okay. part of my life like, all right i understand from, yes mm-hmm. okay yeah now you have to realize that um i in some ways i'm gonna date uh, many of your viewers i don't know what your target is if you are targeting um in terms of these interviews are you targeting um Uh, college age people, high school people, and so forth. But I can speak from my own generation. And you have to realize that I myself, um, Mm -hmm. I come out of a a generation that was in the 1960s and 1970s. Okay, okay. And so our challenges and issues in some ways uh, are different, and maybe some of them are the same. Oh, okay. Okay. So um, I, I I was raised in New York City. Oh, that's how you are. You're born. <laughs> yeah, that's, I was I was born and raised in New York City. I was born in the Bronx. I don't, don't know if you know much about the city of New York, but the city no. of New York is divided yeah. into what are called five boroughs. Okay. Manhattan, Bronx, Queens, Staten Island, and Brooklyn. I, and the only thing is Manhattan, of course, New York City, and... Uh, yeah, the whole city contains Harlem, five Harlem. boroughs. Yeah, they say Harlem. Har- Harlem is a part of Manhattan. Oh, part of Manhattan. Okay, Manhattan. Okay, cool. Yeah, so as I said, you know, the city of New York has five boroughs. Mm-hmm. That's Manhattan, Queens, Brooklyn, Staten Island, and the Bronx. Is it like the same thing? Just what I said. Are you are you times like how we say east side, west side, and all that? Like in Indian? No, they are what are called boroughs. B o r o u g h, and each of them has Mm -hmm. its own, um, not mayor, but each one of them has its own president. So technically, you're saying like um, how the other states are divided into counties and districts. You yes, know, and townships and and all that is different from New York. That's correct. Here in here in um, Indianapolis, it's yeah. divided into nine different counties, or I mean uh, townships. There are nine townships in mm-hmm. the city of Indianapolis, and there are five boroughs in the city of New York. Oh, that's, um... But anyway, but I was born uh, in the Bronx and I mm-hmm. raised in Manhattan. Mm-hmm. And uh, you, you mentioned Harlem, um, yeah. which is where, where many African Americans live. Mm-hmm. And uh, I went to church in Harlem. Oh, so okay. Okay. My, the church to which I belong um, was located in, uh, in Harlem on a hundred and uh, 18th Street actually moved from there to 116th Street. You still and, remember? <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, I still remember. I can I can see it in my mind. Mm-hmm. And uh, the pastor, uh, his name was Dr. Wyatt T. Walker. Okay. And Dr. Walker was one of the lieutenants with uh, Dr. Dr. Martin Luther King. Okay. So mm-hmm. he worked with that whole uh, movement, and um, and I was uh, much influenced uh, by him as I was coming up. But I, but I went to school, I mean, I lived in Manhattan, went to school in uh, Manhattan uh, High School. Um, and when I went to college, I went to a, what's called a music conservatory. Ah. Uh, and, and that's a school okay. that is dedicated to producing musicians, uh, composers, mm-hmm. and things of that sort. So not only do you get the regular college, uh, you know, you know, English, math, and all that kind of stuff, and yeah. writing, and what have you, 
but you also, in addition to that, are having uh, music courses. So oh, okay. I went to the High School of Music and Art, which was in Upper Manhattan. Okay. Um, my plan, uh, as I was growing up, was to be a musician. Ah, so you uh, you can sing. <laughs> I can sing a little. A little. But, um, I was actually going to to be a uh, a trombonist. I I play trombone. That's one of the instruments that I oh. play. Oh, is it like the one um. Like, the uh, one, no, the one that's got this long thing like that. that goes, oh, okay, okay, yeah, okay. I was confusing with that. Okay, okay. You're yeah, right. yeah, the trombone. So, um, like my teacher, um, his name is uh, Don, John Clark. Uh, John Clark uh, played with the the orchestra of the Metropolitan Opera. So, okay. oh, you know, so yeah. wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So in New York. Yeah. I don't know if you know much about the city of New York, but in the city of New York, there's uh, something that's uh, called um, the Lincoln Center for the Performing Arts. And yeah, I mean, like you hear you hear, you hear about it, you know, you know, people talk about it, but yeah, I've never yeah. been there myself. Yeah. Oh, okay. One day you got to do it. So when you have opportunity and you go to New York, mm -hmm. be sure to uh, visit the Lincoln Center for the Performing Arts. And in the Lincoln Center for, for the Performing Arts, yeah. there's the mm -hmm. New York Ballet, the Metropolitan Opera, mm -hmm. the Philharmonic Hall, mm -hmm. and each one of them is dedicated to a particular kind of music. Um, wow. okay. you know, Metropolitan Opera is basically an opera house that houses um, different operas like Tosca and La Traviata and many of these other operas. Um, and then there's the Lincoln Center for the Performing Arts. And they have a whole jazz program there, but they also have classical music uh, mm -hmm. there in, in the uh, uh, the Philharmonic uh, for the Performing Arts. But then also there's the New York Ballet, which houses the New York Ballet Company. Oh. I... And, and my mm -hmm. teacher um, played for the Metropolitan Opera. Wow. So... Yeah, so is the musical school was I, I know it's like a, I don't know even how to ask it, but was it like a part of um um middle high school or college or it's just a school anybody can go? Like, no, that's any, that's college any, age. You have to have oh, graduated I, I, from mm -hmm. high school. Mm -hmm. Um, I went to high school for four years, mm -hmm. and then after high school, I tried out for um both the Juilliard School of Music, which is housed at Lincoln oh, Center. Oh, Juilliard. Yeah, everybody knows Juilliard. <laughs> yeah. And the other one that is like it is the Manhattan School of Music. And the okay. Manhattan School of Music is in Upper Manhattan. Um, yeah. Ma Manhattan School of Music. Um, and during the year that I was getting ready to graduate from high, graduate from high school, the person I wanted to study with was studying at the Juilliard School of Music. And he was the um, a primary trombonist for the um, uh, for the uh, for the the orchestra at Lincoln Center. Um, okay. But he died. <laughs> and so um, I knew that I wanted to study with somebody of uh, some background. So I studied with the trombonist who played with the Metropolitan Opera. Wow, that means you have like a lot of experience. Yeah, it's so um, yeah, so I I studied with him, um, and he was the teacher for the Manhattan School of Music where I where I studied. Okay, and um, is it like um, you're doing this? Is it like because of your passion to it, or just something? Oh, let me try out. You know, no, I, I really had a passion for music. Um, I, I grew yeah. up in a household where my mother played piano mm -hmm. and she also sang. Um, and my siblings, my brother and sister, they both sang. So it was a musical family. And as I was oh, growing up, okay. it just sort of like seeped into my own life uh, to be a musician. So that's why I went to and I tried out for the high school of music and art, you had to try out for that school. You couldn't just go to that high school because you wanted to, you had to try out. And if you passed, then mm -hmm. you could go to the high school. And um, do you think uh, people have taken, or many young people, people who have gone to the, that music school, 
are, are taking advantage of those opportunities in terms of how it has maybe um, maybe made people like you know a big people in our society do you think like a, a lot of people that you grow up or people you have seen now mm -hmm. or like you hear them do you, do you think they take advantages of those opportunities I, I think that anybody who has a passion for something and goes to a school that is dedicated to that art, mm -hmm. they have something in them that wants to demonstrate that in their lives. And so okay. many of the people that I went to school with, they mm -hmm. are either composers okay. or they are musicians okay. playing for different groups, whether that's orchestras or jazz groups. Um, mm -hmm. If you went to the High School of P Performing Arts, which was our sister mm -hmm. high school, yes, the sister high school, it was named Performing Arts High School. And many of those kids, they probably grew up to be um, painters. You know, oh. they paint art or either musician or people who are dancers mm -hmm. who dance in modern dance or people who dance for the ballet company there at, mm -hmm. in the uh, at Juilliard. So if you got that passion and you go to a school that's dedicated to that art, mm -hmm. most likely you'll go in that area. Except that in my case, um, you know, the Lord called me to the ministry. Uh, so uh -huh. I I did not um, pursue. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, my my teacher, um, John Clark, he was making a way for me to be a trombonist with the Metropolitan Opera. <laughs> but um, at some particular point, I told him, I said, you know, I think God is calling me to the ministry. So that's not what he says. What? He says, you got your collar turned around. I said, oh, yeah, man. So anyway, um, so it really was God calling that moved me into the ministry and not, uh, let's say, playing in an orchestra or playing in the pit orchestra for the, uh, the uh, Metropolitan Opera. So for you, you are called to be a minister at that age when you're sitting now, the, the, the musical school? Well, you know, really, I guess it really all started when I was around 16 years of age. I came wow. to know, to know <laughs> Jesus Christ as my personal savior. Yeah. So having that relationship was, and, and during the people that I met, you know, my sister who was a Christian before me and having a number of conversations with a number of people, it began to occur to me. And there were some, some miracles that happened in my life that really led me to the conclusion that God was calling me into ministry, to public ministry. Okay. And, uh, yeah. mm -hmm. and uh, for you, I know because, you know, over the time, maybe you have gained the experience because I think if that passion was music, do you think what advice maybe can you give to people who are maybe you know finishing school or maybe mostly like high school who are is like oh god what should i do next you know it's like um oh, I'm not, okay. you know that i quote as the, the thing to make sure because you don't want to go and um and spend all this time at school or spend all this money and school owns and end up is like I think I don't like what I did. You know, like what are what right. are the steps they should take to make sure? Okay, I like what I like in my life. I like my career. Well, you know, I think in general, um, mm -hmm. people need to really find out what their passions are, okay. and most likely, whatever that passion is, they might go into that area. However, for those who are Christ followers, we walk by another beat. <laughs> okay. We have a we have a different. Um, we have a different, uh, we're listening to a different voice. Yes. Mm -hmm. But those who are Christ followers, they're listening to the voice of God. So they may or may not have a passion in a particular area, but that, and they may go to school for it, but that may not be the thing that they actually spend their life doing. So that means they have to be open to various possibilities. So let's say that, uh... um, so let's say you 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 wanted to be um, a uh, a bricklayer or something like that. Well, you mm -hmm. want to do that, but maybe God may be moving you into another area to do something else. But you got to be open to it. Okay. And and the fact of spending money is, you know, you spend money, but it's not an issue. 
except that I know that even if you spend money in a particular area, whatever you learn with where you spent your money, mm -hmm. that will help you in the next area that you uh, get into mm -hmm. that you, you understand where you may not be in the area that you paid for. Okay. So, so God can help to guide that use. For instance, right now, I am not uh, playing in an orchestra. That's not what I do. In fact, today, mm -hmm. you know, I play a few instruments. So <laughs> um, today is my day off. Ah. So I, I generally um, practice my instruments. Oh, I so I, I was yeah. practicing my baritone horn. I was practicing my recorders. Um, I also write music and things of that sort. So I, I do that. But that's sort of like on my spare time, except that I also use that for the ministry that I'm in right now. Okay. Oh, that's that that's good. Yeah. Uh, but um, but that's but that's God engendered. That's not anything that I thought about doing. That I'm going to write music for the church. I'm going to write uh, music for worship and stuff like that. But that's something that I'm using because when I went to Manhattan School of Music, when I went to mm -hmm. the High School of Music and Art, that's how they trained us. Well, so actually, my, my next question was, you know, how, you know, working with God since you're 16 years old, but at the same time, like you mentioned, so you can, so like, um, you know, the talent that you had, um, you know, for playing is musical and instruments. So those, the knowledge and the, and the skills that you gained then, you are still like using it in a church, whatever the events that you go to and it's like, hey, can you play us, you know, uh, this instrument, whatever, the music or, you, you know, you can. So it's like God was, you know, um, preparing you then, you know, so do you think working with God, he has opened more opportunities, you know, for you or like, um, okay, what does it feel like working with God since then? Like, what is the feeling? You know, like... Well, the, the thing is, is that anybody who is a Christ follower, who mm -hmm. follows after Christ, as I just said earlier, yeah. you definitely have to be open to the various possibilities. Yes. The person that comes in my mind right now is the Apostle Paul. Okay. What he did for a living had nothing to do with what he had been called to do. Mm. That guy was a tent maker. Mm-hmm. That's what he did for a living. He did not get money yes. um, by being a, a, an apostle or you might say a, a pastor of pastors. He, to be honest, he was really a bishop, you might say, because he had other people like Timothy under him that he taught and poured himself into. But yes. that's not what he did for a living. What he did for a living was to make, make tents. So it had nothing to do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's sometimes it may be that a person may have some talent and they may use that in order to live or in order to survive. But their calling in life is not necessarily the same thing that they do in order to make a living. So oh, wow. you really have to be open mm -hmm. to the possibilities that God may lead you into areas where you hadn't planned on it, but yeah. that's what, but that's what you're doing. Yeah, because one of the things is like, um, as young people, one of the challenges they fight it is, you know, like you know, like we live in the world where there's a lot of happening at the same time, you know, and uh, they don't know who to trust or what information to trust. Like uh, there is a lot of everything coming at every angle. Yes. So in terms of those, and and no, and I know maybe you have encountered some. Was still is like okay, should I listen to the uh, to this person or this um, media for for them to you know to you know to be able to filter in you know, what is the you know the right message? What uh, and of course praying you know praying to God is one of the best things and yes. and of course uh, are reading the Bible, but um, people who are not really into maybe like you know like you know uh, into the uh, into the faith, what should you have, like what should they do so that they can choose what is right well as i just said earlier i think that the idea of uh, whatever your passion is that is what is in you mm -hmm. to do and to pursue go ahead and pursue it 
and okay. you see where it leads you. Okay. Because I would guarantee you that in the course of your following that passion, mm -hmm. you'll run into some people that can pique your interest. Okay. Yes. Say, have you ever thought of, have you ever thought of, or you have ever thought of? And they will perhaps give you some ideas and stuff like that that you might pursue. So in other words, I, I would be weary of somebody coming up to me and saying, you, you ought to do this. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, I you could say, thank you for the information. Okay. <laughs> you know, thank you for the information. But that's not necessarily where you're going to go. But you can take it and put it in the back of your mind mm -hmm. and say, you know something? Three years ago, this guy walked up to me and said, have you ever thought of this? And then you can begin to go ahead. But in general, I think that you want to have your mind and your body and your spirit mm -hmm. uh, in a posture of being open to various possibilities. Okay. And I think if you can walk in to various possibilities, you will then, then come into your future. Okay. But but it, it but it is a matter of being open. Okay, and I know what you went through uh, as growing up, and if you look young people challenges, what are the comparisons that you compare then and now, and you see mm. maybe there is a, a room for a room for improvement, or yeah. you know for people to grow. I I you know I think that every generation that is older than another generation will always say. Mm -hmm. You guys got more um, opportunities than I had. That's what mm -hmm. older generation people will say. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. let's say that, <laughs> I mean, let's say that people who come from Africa, uh, they'll be able to say to their young people, well, you got more opportunities than I ever had <laughs> as I was yeah. living in Kenya and Tanzania or, <laughs> or Burundi or whatever, you know, Yes, and I had more possibilities. And in some ways, it, it it may make it more difficult because there are so many choices. Yeah. And um, and there are so many ways in which people can be pulled this way or pulled that way mm -hmm. because there are so many choices. Yes. And, and that's why I am, at least at the beginning, suggest that people start with the passion mm -hmm. and see where that leads you, but be open to other possibilities. So I'll continue, I will really continue to repeat that because as I work with young people now, mm -hmm. I can see that they're in some ways they are on a boat mm -hmm. um, and they're almost waiting for winds to blow uh, in a particular direction. Direction, okay, yeah. Because they really don't know what it is that they want to do. But yeah. but and, but they have to be helped, I think, by those who are leaders and those who are olders mm -hmm. to help them to discover what is in them to do. What and is that I, passion I, that's in them? Okay, and uh, what are the steps that uh, you are taking? I know, like, um, you know, as we were discussing another day, uh, you know, like, pandemic has really come and affected in every sector of our life, you know, and every, you know, every age group in our life. Or, or demographic, what are the steps that may, you know you are taking or thinking about or planning that are going to bring more young people to church? Because oh. I think maybe that is you know that is um um kind of a drought or maybe less or maybe they have gone out more in the past instead of you know having more you know young people who can help. Like you said, that they you know that they um a future tomorrow, you know because. You know, one day somebody's gonna take over, you know, from you. And that is, you know, so um how 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 would you you know you know tackle that? Well, you know, I think one of the things is uh, to persuade the older people mm -hmm. that first of all, they need to make sure they recognize that young people, and I'm talking about high school students. And even before then, middle school students, mm -hmm. that they are not the church of tomorrow. They are the church of today. Ha, I like that. Yeah. And I if like that's that. true, it mm -hmm. means that we have to involve them now 
oh, in oh, various asset, ap, aspects of being a part of the Church of Christ. So and, if, and, yeah, 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 yeah. So if they recognize that they can play a part now in the body of Christ, it won't be an odd thing for them to move from one level to another, depending upon their gifts and talents. Yes. And so, uh, so yeah, that's right. the first thing I'm saying. I'm saying yeah. that adults, mm -hmm. those in leadership, those in authority, yes. that they need to recognize that young people are the church of today. Yeah. And thank you for saying that, actually. Um, we always talk about the future, but the future can be cannot be the future that is not you know present. And yes. I think, um because at the same time, you know, talking about the present, you know, you are giving them the um opportunity to to practice, for example, uh being in church choir or playing like instruments like keyboard and other instruments yes. and other other functions in church. So I think you are very correct on that, and I like that um, the chance to teach, like us taking that that opportunity to, you know, now so that we can practice. And okay, like, but let, let me go beyond that. Let yeah. me go beyond that because okay. I see some churches that are effective. For instance, you know, um, in fact, this coming Sunday, I don't know if you next Sunday or whatever, you might have an opportunity to see what we're doing here. Mm -hmm. But on next coming Sunday, we have a music combo. And again, that's a part of the gift that God has given me. So uh -huh. I am reaching out to some other people who can play instruments and stuff like that. So we're going to have a, a combo, you know, drummer, guitar player, bass player, uh, myself on keyboards, um, mm -hmm. and then uh, uh, some singers and so forth. But that's only one part. What I mean by seeing young people as leaders now, they need to, those people who have the faith and who have the ability, they need to be given the opportunity to pray, to oh, pray, okay. to pray publicly. Yes. They need to be given opportunities to read the scriptures within the context of the worship service. Okay. They need to be given those opportunities that normally adults do, mm. but now because they are opening those doors to these young people and they're doing that at a young age, yes. they won't see that as a foreign experience as they get older. Yeah, and, and I think that is engagement um, in, in leading matters. And uh, for example, when you see young, any young person coming at churches, it's good to, to give them something you know, to keep them busy and to look, because everything, of course, is good to look to look for, for like when you go to work, it's like, okay, I'm going to work so hard so that I can get money at the end of the day. You know, there is mm -hmm. something that motivates you. So for, yes, we, you know, coming to pray to church and working for God and bring more people to church, that is the best thing. But at the same time, you know, having something at church that uh, is like, oh, today I'm going to, you know, help pastor with this thing or whatever, do this and that. I think that makes people even to look more forward for because there is engagement. And I think that is when Jesus said, let the, you know, spread the gospel to the nations because they, because everybody is working together as a team, you know? Yes. So I think that engagement really matters. Well, you know, and the other thing I think uh, for many young people is um, in many ways, I don't think they believe that they are being heard. Oh, yeah. That's so, uh, so in other words, um, mm -hmm. those who are in leadership, and mm -hmm. I'm generally obviously speaking of adults now, are, are those in leadership in churches, pastors and deacons and all those kinds of people. They need to learn how to empathize with young people, realizing that the age in which they are living and those who come from other countries, mm -hmm. this is not the country they came from. Yes. You know, America is not Kenya. Yes. It's mm -hmm. not the Congo. It's mm -hmm. not Tanzania. Mm -hmm. It is the United States of America, which has a different mixture and different kinds of people in it than those people do who came from that country. So in other words, adults need to empathize mm -hmm. and realize that these young people are living in a different place in a new age. So when you empathize with somebody, you try to feel what they feel. 
Yeah, we yeah. Kinda, try to feel the struggle that they are having that maybe I as an adult have not had. Or if I've had a struggle, it may be in some ways comparable, but it is not the same. Yeah, and I think that is a challenge because there is a cultural, you know, separation or, or like the, the demographic, like, you know, people like of who grow up in maybe in 40s and 80s and 70s and in those times, things has like things have been changing so quickly even five years ago everything is so different now yes and, um, and i think that uh most of the one thing i'm i'm like planning is listen to anyone sit down just listen and and and, and, and you know just like you said just a feel uh, empathy for them you know because i feel like we all go in uh you know our uh, different problems and um of course like people from different countries, you know, our understanding is different from because cultures and traditions are so different. And yes. sometimes they might be, America has its own tradition and whatever people yes. live here. And I think that sometimes when people come together, it can, it can look like a, a little bit, um, how can I say, friction in terms of understanding and everything. But I think this is about being patient and also, be able to listen to everyone no matter who they are know in what they're saying because okay but, ju but just to i don't want to really i just want to try to share this with you that means then therefore that adults mm -hmm. need to plan times yeah where there's an opportunity for youth and for young people to speak honestly okay about the situations that they are going through okay. otherwise you will never hear them Okay. Now it, it happens that, and I think I shared with you, you earlier, within our tradition in the Lutheran Church, mm -hmm. we have a series of, um, I want to call it classes. It called confirmation classes or catechetical classes, and one of the things that happens there is where the pastor interfaces with mm -hmm. young people of high school and middle school age. Okay. In the course of that class, which for us takes place every single Sunday night at 5 p.m., mm -hmm. I have an opportunity to share with these young people the things that I know about the Word of God and what mm -hmm. I know about the Christian life, but at the yeah. same time, finding out where their minds are and yeah. what the struggles and challenges that they're going through, and then, therefore, help them to see where the good news is of the mm -hmm. gospel in their lives so okay. that they can interpret what yes. the good news of the gospel is for mm -hmm. their time, for the kids that they go to school with, the bullying that takes place there, you know, yeah. how in the world Christ is going to be relevant to their situation in life. How do they, um, those who are African-American of African descent, how to deal with um, things like uh, discrimination and oppression and things of that sort yeah. in this land called America. So they have to handle, you know, how, how the gospel comes face to face with those situations that they are living in. So uh, in other words, the, the gospel needs to have legs put on it mm -hmm. that the young people can recognize and share. Okay, and uh, uh, yes, with that, do you, uh, do you like, um, uh, is there like other activities maybe young people can engage in terms of concerts, games, in terms of um, maybe like um, a church day, like a picnic day, like a, is there like um, other um, engagements you think they are more, because like, you know, like young people like having fun, <laughs> you know, they're young, yeah. you know, they move on, just to, to live a life a little bit and, is there like a more like what are the things maybe do you like um advice or like even if you know like advice a young people they can come with the different activities that they can perform maybe like let's say when the church is over maybe the evening they can go to some this place or a park and do something it's like what are the things that you have seen work successfully as activities for them to be with um actually and and you know that we're at the end of at the end of we're at the end of a pandemic that everybody's kind of coming after, out of, or yeah. what have you. 
So now before the pandemic, you know, we would have a festival for both adults and youth. And while the youth are there, we would have activities and games and things for them to interact with one another. Mm -hmm. And ours was a multicultural event so that people from other countries, different countries would be coming together with other youth. Um, right now, I'm planning with another of plant, uh, pastors for a retreat mm -hmm. that our different churches mm -hmm. will bring our confirmation classes, our young people, to come to a sleepover. Oh, nice. So we'll go to a, uh, you know, we have three Lutheran camps in, uh, in Indiana. And um, one of those camps will go to that camp and will spend uh, three, uh, two or three nights together, okay. um, having an opportunity for them to interact with other young people from different places, but mm -hmm. also um, to come face to face with the word of God as well, but mm -hmm. have some fun as well. So yeah, so those in authority, those again, those uh, leaders mm -hmm. need to find different ways of bringing young people together. Yeah, and uh, another challenge that maybe you have seen over the time it is young people move a lot <laughs> in terms of like um, they go to different schools, they go to different states, they are they, they get different jobs. It's like uh, it's like they don't have a place. It's like um, you know, like as uh, people who are retiring, it's like I'm tired of moving from house to house. It's like I want to go to another, you know, just another place because it's a big city. Is um, everybody's going yeah. to so. And I think that is more now than even before. Yes. So what are the steps should we think, even for myself, uh, I can take to be able, no matter where you go, it doesn't mean like, uh, it doesn't mean you, you came from New York, you know, you, you have, and you're maybe of most of your families in New York, it doesn't mean like you forgot them. It's still your family, you know, you connect with them, you talk to them, you know, maybe you visit once in a while. So what are the best way to keep in touch no matter even if you go to Canada or whatever, another country, you know, because I think the movement sometimes is like, ah, young people always come and go. And it's better we give, you know, seniors to all like this church um, positions because then, you know, they're never here. So what is the best way to engage with them no matter if they're not in, in that church? Well, you know, we're, uh, I think we talked about this, but also it happened that um, I got an email mm -hmm. um, because I'm a musician and because I'm a composer, yes, there is a software that we use in order to create music. It's called Finale. And oh. Finale is a software that composers use to create music, right? Mm -hmm. So I happened to get an email from the company that makes Finale, and they were encouraging people to go to a seminar that would mm -hmm. take place online in order to learn how to best use finality. Now, it occurs to me, oh, and, and when I was, I, I listened to, it was about an hour presentation of this woman, her name is Carly, and she's talking about, she is a musician, she's also a music teacher. Mm -hmm. And she was holding a seminar for other teachers on how to use the technology in order to teach piano. Yes. Okay. Uh, so I'm translating this mm -hmm. to the situation that we are in right now. I My confirmation class includes one person in Texas, another person in Florida, and two mm -hmm. who are here in Indianapolis. Wow. wow. Mm -hmm. So when you're talking about people getting together, what do young people do anyway? They are on technology. Yeah, it is. They are on technology. So the thing is to use the avenue that they already use, yes. but for the purpose of building them up and also building their faith. Yeah, and I think that is the best way to reach them out because you know technology is like going everywhere. <laughs> Who'd think like today we're gonna be doing, you know, we're gonna be you know be meeting this this way. So like um like as you know we I said like things have been you know moving fast and you know and growing and changing and um yeah so like um for you you know be able to accomplish for example in charge and everything that you're doing you know with your elders or the people help you 
So um, is there a way maybe um, some days maybe you can invite people, for example, like when you have it, so like, a, like I know like you say that is, um, I can't remember exactly, <laughs> there is this event that happened at your church, like people come with different clothes and um, like uh, they cook every food from any kind. Oh yeah, that was the Harvest Festival. Yeah, the I Harvest haven't. Festival. Yeah. Yeah, the harvest festival yeah so uh which which uh holidays let me just call it holiday for the church that you have well uh, but this is something that it takes some planning i mean our plan uh, and because of the uh, the um the pandemic yes we normally had this in the fall and so it would take place in september uh of each year september october our plan is to try to have the festival next spring so, so this that, uh, yeah. October never happened. Did it happen this October? No, it won't. It won't. Okay. Right? It won't happen. No. But our plan is to try to have the um the harvest festival in the spring okay. of next of next year. I love it. I love yeah. it. <laughs> and uh, in fact, your father was here. Um, oh uh, yeah, I should. I should. I, I Did you come have... one time? Oh, how can I miss? Oh, yeah, oh, right. Yeah. Man, come on. So it, it was it was really it was a great event, you know, it was an opportunity for people to share different foods from different countries, as well as the kids played games. And then there was an opportunity for people of different countries and nations to be able to talk with one another. We're sitting down. We had a choir come and sing. We had a group from who were Burmese. Who yes, came I remember. And, yeah. They, and they, then the yeah. historical dance uh, that they normally do in their countries and what have you. So those those things are ways for people to get together to come to know one another. But I think what that what sparks that on is another principle I think that's important and that is to make sure that um you in wherever you are you need to fuel yes warmth and uh uh community among the people Mm -hmm. so that they are always open to new voices and to new people so that whenever they see a new person walking in, they don't ignore them. But they say, hello, hey, how you doing? You know, my name is James or my name is uh, Susie or whatever, you know, and mm -hmm. uh, so good to have you here with us and so forth. So there's got to be this whole idea of the warmth and hospitality wow. that yeah. that is in the whole body so that yes. people uh, will be able to welcome uh, new and different people that has to be throughout the whole system yeah and i think that makes people feel like welcome people feel they are part of because like that harvest um the harvest um is plentiful you know but the, the, the laborers are few <laughs> right I don't know, I like it because I see people who I can, I feel belong, we are part of in, you know, I can is like, oh, they look like me in terms of, oh, they're from all these places that are, oh, you know, you know, sometimes until you see somebody like you can uh, uh, relate to, it feels always different, but it's like, wow, the way they dress and you are, you are wearing, you are, we are, you know, are wearing your African clothes or your cultural clothes and mm -hmm. of course food and people, it makes you feel like you're you know you're part of you know people is yes like, you're happy even i don't know them maybe even we cannot understand each other languages but you feel that energy of happiness and i feel like um for church to continue of course god is always the first and we always do we chat they sing we you know you you preach a little bit and we all do this you know different activities and i feel like those are the those things should happen often and the other thing my question as we finish is um what are you know like um what things like do you, and you say like are you do like you meet the you know young people every friday no every sunday oh, sorry. evening I'm... at 5 p.m online okay. okay okay and also i remember one time we used to uh teach like saturday morning um class well, I, I, I have a, a regular Bible study that takes mm -hmm. place on Saturday mornings at 10 a.m. Okay, so those and are... that's online and also in the building because there have some oh, people okay. who come to the building 
mm -hmm. and other people who are online. Okay, so those are the three opportunities, you know, for people who want. And and what about for the for the other people like uh, which class do they have their own like Bible study or just uh, only this is mostly well, for young people. Right now, the, it's uh, right now the Bible study is primarily older people. Okay. Um, because the level I guess that we're dealing with is you know kind of adult level stuff and whatever you. Okay. My experience with young people is unless you got a group that is open to young people and young ideas and young ways of communicating, they will not feel welcome. Yes. So that means you really have to have something that really is focused on what is happening in their lives. Yes. And, and the way in which they are living their lives mm -hmm. and they can freely speak about that. And okay. so, um, and that's what's happening in my confirmation class. Okay. I'm presenting this on their level, mm -hmm. on on uh, so they can know, uh, learn, and memorize, but also say, well, this is true in the same way. Like in my high school, this is what the young, you know, so they can speak in that those kinds of terms, and they can okay. um, get things on their level. Okay, and so and I did have that, you know, engagement you know, through focus, because I think with young people, they always look something exciting, something gonna like, it's, it's great. And I think um, that is what they like. And what is, do you have like, um, um, you know, for, of course you cannot do this by yourself, but like, uh, um, and I know like we talk about this earlier on, but I, you know, for the, on behalf of just, um, you know, uh, you know, people understand, like how do you do it like i know like you're there maybe telling people hey um hey can you help this area this you know like how do you really manage all this to make sure you know even if you're not there for example there is a, a personal issue came on an engagement or appointment yeah. like how do you really manage all this you know I, I listen um listen um i i made a visit on a couple who happened to be an elderly couple and they are mm -hmm. not able to um come out that much but I made a visit on them. And on my way there, I saw a sign outside of a church and it quoted a passage from scripture where Jesus says, the harvest is plentiful, but the labors are few. Therefore pray the Lord of the harvest that yeah. he would have harvesters to work in his vineyard. Yeah. So the thing is, is we have to have other allies yes. and others who will work with us. Okay. Well, in some cases, you really need to pray for that mm -hmm. so that you can, like, for instance, my meeting with you. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I, I was telling you, I said, well, you may not be a member of this particular church, but maybe you have a talent and gift that you are willing yes. to use for mm -hmm. the sake of the kingdom of God. And you can come here, for instance, um, we have one sister. You know, she's a lawyer and, and she's got some different things she's got to do on some weekends. Well, she teaches her Sunday school. Yes. And, uh, but she's out for two weeks. Oh, for so that means that I had to look at around our folks and talk with our folks and tell you, uh, talk to somebody and say, listen, sister is not going to be able to be here. Could you sit in with the children for this particular Sunday? And so she said, yes. So in other words, we have to be willing to ask okay. uh, other people mm -hmm. and ask them whether they would be willing to live out their discipleship mm -hmm. by doing this job or that job or whatever, because it's not volunteerism. It's yeah. living out your discipleship. Yeah. And I, and I think I like that, you know, for you reaching out as, and one thing is, of course, for you, you know, and for everybody is that having Holy Spirit because sometimes, you know, you have to keep, you know, being a persistent and not giving up and, you know, being every day trying and, and, and uh, for me, I, I would just say I appreciate, <laughs> appreciate you a lot because even for me, you always reach out to me and I was like, hey, right now, let's, you know, talk to uh, Pastor Kepas because I feel like, there is so many you can advise. There's so many things you can direct me, you know, and uh, and I feel like other people would want the same thing. And I was like, okay, you know, let's let's start from somewhere, you know, yeah. and maybe over the time, 
you know, uh, we can be able to work to help everyone, you know, and um, Christian and Christian, Jews, uh, Muslims, we all want people from God. And I think, um, and in your knowledge, I know you can help, you know, like many people, even, you know, with the careers, with the school choices, uh, you know, school you know, choices, with family life and social life and every type of topic, even if you don't have in, information, I know you can direct, hey, maybe I can direct you to somebody because maybe yes. you always learn every time. Sure. So, I just want to just uh, give thanks to you because you know, always telling my dad, hey, hey, say, and he's like, oh my goodness, I feel bad because I need to talk to her, you know, and it's like, uh, you know, uh, postponing every time, like we always do, and I feel like, okay, from now, we can start talking to each other slowly somewhere, and over the time, you know, we can engage, you know, and like how we're engaging, and who knows, by this time next year, where we'll be, but, you know, we have to start. Well, you know, I mean, uh, was it the, the Apostle Paul, when he writes in Hebrews, he says, you know, um, uh, beware of your uh, inviting strangers because yeah. you could be entertaining an angel uh, <laughs> unawares. So yeah. it's sort of like, you know, we have to realize that God provides answers to issues and problems through others. Yes. Yeah. And, and we may not know who they are, but God knows who they are. And God is going to lead them to us in order that we might fulfill God's purpose for ourselves. Yeah. So and, we have to be open yes. to, to others. Yes. It's yeah. again, that whole idea I told you about <laughs> earlier about being open. You yes. gotta be open. Yeah. And for me, what I've learned it is, and I, you know, without, you know, taking like you know, much of your time, it is, I play no matter what, or play for other people, no matter who. sometimes, and I know maybe I've played for people for maybe for years <laughs> and a long time, but even if let's say you are not there one day, somebody's gonna pick up from you. So one thing I've run is patience and keep praying and keep praying because yes. God will be able to somehow, not somehow, God will be able to help that person or whatever the issue you're praying. So uh, like I said, you know, we can start, but you know, we pray over the time and God is gonna open the doors, you know, gonna make everybody schedule work, work well. And yes. uh, because we are going to one place and if you're going you know you know we are all going to downtown come on let's get in one bus and go together you know so the same thing with heaven let's get in one bus or and let's go as a group you know because i feel like going as a all of us together is better than yourself which you know you can go but i feel like it is more even rewarding to god and god even more happy even yourself when you know somebody is okay and no matter the struggle they are going through they have lord because that is the most important. That is the only thing most important that you can have. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Well, listen. I'm glad we had this opportunity to have this yeah. conversation, and yeah. I'm hoping and praying that um, this conversation can be used to spark in someone else the um, the idea that there are possibilities out there, and yes. that yes. and that they can they can really look for their passion to speak. Um, the people who come to them, that uh, those conversations can speak to them as well. Yes. And in that way, uh, for those who are Christ followers, that people are hearing from God in terms yes. of what their next steps need to be in order to live out being a disciple of Jesus Christ, because that really is the end goal. And yes. that is that we make disciples of mm -hmm. all nations yeah. And as we do that, um, we're fulfilling our purpose. Yeah. Now, and, whether yeah. it makes money for us or not. Yeah. Because yeah, uh, yeah. yeah, that's not the goal. The yeah, goal the really goal is, is to serve mm -hmm. God and serve and people. Of, and to make sure as many people go to everybody, as many people as possible. And uh, thank you, Pastor Kipras, for, Pastor Kipras, for taking your time. And, um, and of course, uh, we'll be talking more topics. And we can talk about about something, you know, about you know something. So you know that is other um, other topics we can talk about, and um, and also you can uh, invite other church members who who knows what their information, uh, you know, get information or advice they can give us. So this is just a starting. <laughs> okay, well, very good. I'm glad that uh, you have a mind to do this, and um, 
as you think of some other things, and perhaps I might think of about some topics that you might use uh, in your series so that uh, yeah. you might tackle some of those things yeah. as well.